These things, guys, are your viral transport medias. We're going to get these out on the floor. And when you get them out on the floor, they're going to have these little swabs in them that you see here. There's the, the little metal one and the, and the one with the plastic shaft. Um, technically, the, one, the plastic one is supposed to be for cleaning and the metal one for taking your specimen, but, I, but it's fine to put either or both of them, them into here. You can never collect on wood. Uh, if you collect on wood, whatever you collect it is dead. What sterilizes the wood is gonna, is gonna, when it's in there that long, it's gonna sterilize, um, it's gonna sterilize your specimen. Um, this is the M4 media. The M4 media is, um, uh, it's isotonic and has, um, elem and has whatever nutrients in them um, that the cells that the viruses live in need to stay alive, plus it has antibiotics to kill off any bacteria that might want to kill those cells. Um, nowadays, th these that that we have um, in-house that come with these, these blue tops, they're, um, the antibiotics are not as picky as they used to be. Um, you can leave them um, they don't have to be refrigerated right away if they happen to be sitting out for a couple hours or something. It's not going to hurt them. Um, those are, are your regular swabs. You may also see these around someplace. These, these have... Actually, they leave the swab in this one. Um, but, oh, there's one. There's a swab. This is just a... That's just a regular swab. Sometimes you'll see these like this that have the fancy dancy new swabs that have all the little fingers sticking out of them. And those are a good thing to have. They, I don't know, I think they might be too expensive right now for us. We'll see. We get them in occasionally from elsewhere. Um, if for some reason you're sending us urines, they're going to come in your just your regular sterile urine container you use out on the floors. Um, we're going to transfer them into one of into something like this that has about this much um, antibiotics and antifungals in them um, to. Um, to keep whatever to keep whatever cells are there in, in the urine alive and keep your viruses alive. Then when it gets here, um, after we spin it down, we're going to dilute it half and half um, with the two, with the two percent feed solution um, that we use, just because the pH and such of this will tend to kill your cell lines. Um, if you're collecting for CMV um, and you want an and you want an enteric specimen um, for that, um, you can send biopsies. You can send um, just swabs of, of the the mouth area and what all. And if you want to do it rectally, you've got to send us a swab that has no stool on it because anything that has stool on it is going to kill the cell line. Um, so we keep. So we can't use those. You want to just have a just have um, a more or less clean swab of the uh, just with no stool on it of the of the rectal wall. Um, if you send tissues in an ideal world, they should be um, in M4. If not, as long as you keep them keep them wet wet, they're going to be okay, and we can use them. Um, if you're going to send if you're, if you're sending for PCRs and things like that, those can be on just on just plain swabs. Although it's better if you've got them in your viral transport media. Um, but if you actually want cultures, you need to to collect them in your viral transport media. Um, what else? And if they're body, and if you're sending body fluids, don't put them into viral transport media because then they're too dilute. So body fluids do not go in, trans in viral transport media. Everything else um, is good to go in viral transport media, so you don't have to do it for tissues or urines. Um, actually, it's better if you leave the urines for us to fuss with. That's about all I can think of this minute as far as transport goes. Um, okay, then they're going to get to us, and we're going to take them transfer them up into these little guys, spin them down in the center, spin, spin them down the centrifuge, and we're going to take out the supernate and put them into all these containers, and we're going to plant onto the live cells from the supernate, and this little pellet that's left in the bottom, um, the text 
<coughs> the text will use to do the direct fluorescent assays should you need a result sooner. <coughs> the other things you'll use this M4 transport media for are anything that needs to be kept alive intracellularly, like your mycoplasma and such like that. You can also use them for GC chlamydia amplifications. Um, if you don't have, if you don't have the, the little kits, or you want to use some site other um, than other than a genital site. That's about it for those. Um, when we get them, we're going to plant them onto these shell vials. And um, if it's CMV, they're also going to get planted into these these wells because the text do some things that take longer than the days that these that these shell vials are good for. Um, the shell vials are kept in two places. Um, the MRC fives nowadays are the only ones that actually get stored in the incubators because they don't overgrow. Everything else has been. played with and adjusted and, and modified over the years and these guys all tend to all tend to overgrow. So um, during um, while they're being just generally stored, they're kept out at room temperature and we put them into the incubator for like two or three hours before we use them to get them up and metabolizing so that we can um, basically so it's it's so that it's easier for them to um, get infected. Um, before, when we, after they're all up and starting metabolizing again, we're going to take off the feed media that's in them, put in the put in new feed media that's appropriate to um, the cells that were the cells that we're working with and what the uh, and and what the virus is that we're trying to grow. Back in the day, if we did a respiratory viral panel. It would be this whole side of this of this um, of this tray of wells, um, plus a couple of plus a couple of other wells in, inside inside the incubator. Um, the reason we had to do this was because the viruses you were trying to grow needed to grow in different cell lines, and the viruses liked or did not like different kinds of feed medias. Um, the feed medias are something they call eagle minimum essential medium, um, plus more or less, or sometimes no, um, bovine serum. And um, your, your M4 is that eagle medium essential plus um, antibiotics. The feed mediums are eagle minimum essential plus different amounts of the bovine serum. Um, most things want 2%. Varicella zoster really likes bovine serum. It gets 10%. And back in the day, we used to use it also just, just the plain EMEM for flus, because flus don't like it at all. Um, so you would, you would need that. And, but, um, the other problem that you had was the different cell lines that you used had endemic viruses. They would cross-contaminate each other. So between them cross-contaminating and us needing to feed them different things, you wound up with all those cells. And if for some reason we can't get the other, we can't get the others, we'll have to go back to, to that. Um, the other problem you have with those, if you're ever thinking about using them, is the monkey kidney cells have nasty viruses, which you guys know more than I do about, um, which uh, which don't bother the monkeys, but are nasty. But, but are nasty for us, so we didn't want to keep those on hand. Um, eventually, we got we got it out to where uh, we didn't have to do that anymore. We got these two. They developed cell lines that they could put together, and they would not cross contaminate each other. And that they could, and they developed feed media that would satisfy all the viruses. Um, so we got instead of this whole tray full. Can now use just these three for the respiratory viruses. Um, it's got it's got both of the kinds of cells in there, and between being able to incubate both cells together and using the um, antigen antibody flags that we've got now, that's all we need. Which is a good thing. A few years later, 
they were able to do it with the enteroviruses. And so now we've got that. And with the enteroviruses, we use the Super Emix feed medium. And with the respiratory viruses, we use that arm mix. We also got these eldest cells. Um, the eldest cells we use for um, for um, the herpes simplex virus. Um, they did something to these to these cells where um, they're they're producing more of an more of an enzyme um, that that happens only that happens only with the HSV cells. Um, when you look at them under your micro, under your microscope, you're going to see. There are these MRC5 cells, but the regular ones that we haven't tampered with are like really fine, look kind of like striated cardiac cells. They're even hard to pick out on the thing. These things have thick cell walls and they're all kind of scrunched down and um, they look like they're feeling really, really sick. Um, and they keep looking pretty rough even after we've, incub even after we've incubated them for a couple days. But they, um, they grow that enzyme. Therefore, we no longer have to hold these things for a week for you to do your HSV. Um, the, they modified them so that they'll put, up enough, put out enough of that enzyme um, that we can tell the next day we have to incubate for like 18 hours. So we can pretty much do it overnight. And that's about all you need to, need to know. Um, if you're interested, they've got somewhere you can look at old, and you might have a have something come up with um, if you've got a project or something um, where you'd want to want to use some of the other cell lines and things like that. You can find charts of that. We don't have any around anymore. Um, and that's about it. You can also keep your viruses. Um, you can also um, freeze your specimens for for your viruses. Um, in the minus 20 or the minus 70. That's about it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.